Hello everyone and welcome back to another great super cool radio interview. I am your host as always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in. Before I start talking about my guests, just a quick reminder to thumbs up this video and make sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That way not miss any new interviews or episodes. I got an amazing guest who will be joining me momentarily. He is the legendary guitarist for The Boneless Ones, Dress the Dead, and Forbidden, Craig Lowe Cicero. In this interview, we discuss the new lineup for Forbidden, how that all came together, and so much more about Forbidden. Plus, we touch on Dress the Dead and The Boneless Ones, plus so much more. I hope you enjoy this interview, so let's dive in. Before we jump into the show, I want to tell you about our merch store on Threadless. Shop a wide variety of logos with multiple colors and sizes available for each design. Your support is greatly appreciated and helps us continue to make killer content like this episode. Please visit supercoolradio.threadless.com or the link in the description to shop now. I got a really great guest joining me at this time. I'm very excited to chat with him. He's the guitarist for the Boneless Ones, Dress the Dead, and Forbidden. Please welcome Craig Lo Cicero. Hey, what's up, man? Said it right. Everything was, that was nice and smooth, like an X-Lax. It was all good. <laughs> I, I was practicing a lot because I know I've seen a lot of interviews where people don't get the uh, pronunciation correct, so I was practicing all this weekend, so I'm glad everything went smooth as X-Lax. Yeah. Well, you know, it doesn't bother me when someone gets it wrong and I usually don't correct them because my whole life it's been that way. You know, I know that uh, when I did Jamie Jossa's show, he had done the research because the first time we did it, he butchered my name. I don't remember how many times. And I was like, I didn't, you know, like, whatever, it's fine. But yeah, that was uh, it's always uh, nice to see somebody taking the extra time to figure it out. There's a lot of names I butcher all the time. I see names written and I'm like, that's not what I thought. You know, so it's I, you're not alone. Everyone does it. No, I completely understand. I've, um, yeah, I come from a, a Polish uh, family, and some of those names where it's like, like five consonants and then a vowel, it's uh, that stuff gets kind of crazy too. <laughs> yes, no, that that's a wild one. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, I'm really glad to have you on the show. It's an honor to chat with you. I know we have so much news to talk about. As I mentioned in the intro, forbidden. You guys have uh, just so much news coming out for you guys this year for 2023. Before we get to all that, I got a fun question before we start diving into the more serious topics. Uh, what is one album you would recommend everyone check out in their lifetime? Oh, geez. Well, I mean, it, my, my mind immediately reverts to the Beatles, you know, but everyone's checked all that out. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, the gateway drug for me and in, in, in a great music, uh, and learning about you know, um, mo. I would, I'm not really a theory guy, but just how modes work and how emotions will like really come into play with stuff would be uh, Radiohead's "The Bends" was like my gateway to that. And then of course, OK Computer is like, oh, that's the best. But "The Bends" was my gateway. And it's such a guitar album. It's so much heavy guitars and like explosive stuff. People are like they're going, they just you know, what about Creep? I'm like, yeah, well that. That's cool, but I like the bands. Like that started it for me. So that's a gateway I would recommend that everybody tries to listen to if you want to hear what amazing songwriting is and emotional uh, peaks and valleys and you know stuff like that. Real great answer. Very good. Yeah, like I know when you talk about like Radiohead, everyone just thinks of Creep, but like a lot of their other music is actually really good and very underrated because everyone just goes to the one song. Yeah, well, you know, it's like uh, Stone Temple Pilots, you know, like the first album, everyone thinks of, thinks of them as grunge. Like, no, they're a fucking rock and roll band. You know, like they were never a grunge band. But it's all because of, read it! You know, those two notes right there said everybody, I was like Pearl Jam. Like, man, you have no idea how great, because they're, to me, the last great American rock and roll band, straight rock and roll band, is them and Black Rose. You know, uh, some people would come, pop in with, uh, what's that band from L.A. that right now is doing so well? 
they toured with Black Sabbath, Rival Sons. They're cool, but they don't have the dynamics. They 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 don't they don't have the the the, the scape and scope of of uh, Stone Temple Pilots nor uh, Black Crows. They do a thing and it's cool, but it ain't that cool. No, I got you for sure, for sure. <laughs> All right, so so now diving into Forbin, as I said leading up to this, you guys have had huge announcements this year. So really getting into it first, uh, you guys have announced the one and only European date so far will be at the Alcatraz Metal Festival in Belgium. So like, what can people expect from a 2023 Forbidden show? Enthusiasm. You know, I mean, you got to go backwards to move forwards here. And, and when Forbidden kind of, we didn't disband like officially in 2012. It just was kind of a fizzle, you know. Uh, Russ was not feeling good. He wasn't, you know, he was suffering from severe alcohol uh, addictions, and it was really affecting all of his shows and his and his day to day life. And he just couldn't get up for gigs, you know. And we were flying home from that gig, and he was telling me he didn't want to do whacking because he didn't want to travel like that. He was all like, you know, he wanted he'd rather if he was going to do it, he wanted to go first class. I'm like, bro, no, I like mean, no. So, but I mean, at that time, his his head wasn't straight. So since then, he's become sober. Uh, which is a big, big thing. And that's why he's not doing this because his sobriety is the most paramount thing. And, uh, it, you know, he, he, he having him around alcohol every night on tour is probably, he's not one of those kind of guys that's going to just be like, okay, I've got the willpower. I, he knows his limits and that's why he's not here. So having Norman is a big, 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 big uh, plus in the enthusiasm and, uh, you know, confidence and belief in himself like he's not shorted on any of those things and he's not arrogant and he's not cocky he's just completely comfortable in his own skin and i noticed it the first time that he sang covers with us you know but there's that and i also think that chris contos is also somebody that adds a lot of uh, uh confidence flair um you know experience i mean we had mark hernandez uh up until 2011 and he had to quit on tour to deal with his family stuff and that which we canceled an entire European tour after that. So it wasn't really an option for me to bring Mark back. And then we had Sasha Horn, who was great, uh, who came in for Mark. And we took, we did that last European stuff and a, and a few U.S. or California dates before we left. And then, then the whole thing just kind of fell apart, poor guy. But he's with Ex Hoarder now, and they're kicking ass, and he lives in New Mexico. So he's a guy I talked to, and he wanted to do it. But I'm like, all these guys were, were out of town and – I don't really want to deal with flying people in and out for a show. So, you know, that's a lot, right. that's a lot of mispractice, you know, <laughs> it's like, a, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, no, for sure. I mean, you know, it's, um, you know, everything you said, it has to, it has to work, you know, like forward for the band, you know, you can't be, you know, as you said, like missing practice or other things that do come up. Uh, you, you gotta be a solid unit. You gotta be tight, uh, you know, to be able to do this now. When did like all this started falling into place? Because I've heard from you know previous interviews and some of the videos you guys have put out, this happened very quickly. Like when did very this start uh, coming together? Well, there's a there's a whole uh, process to get my mind even uh, conditioned to brainwash me into the point where I would think it was even an idea I could do. Because first of all, Russ is great. I and I you know he's my bro, and I never thought I'd ever do it without Russ and Matt together. You know. Um, the other guys, you know, they come, they go, but if you weren't there for the whole thing, you don't know what it was like working with everybody else. And, you know, um, but when it came to vocalists, mm, I just couldn't imagine. So, uh, we're going to go back to preparing for Bay area international that we brought to Europe this summer to the dynamo. Um, we were getting ready. We were starting to work on the songs and I realized, shit, we don't have anybody to sing this stuff. Everyone's like you. We had Caden from Hyrax and, and Randy from Lamb of God and Mark from Death Angel and also Will from Death Angel sang. And, and my singer Kayla ended up singing uh, a song uh, because George Corpse Grinder was supposed to sing, but his bus had to peel out early. So, but anyway, those they were all on tour or in LA. So uh, Chris Conto suggested Skinner. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's really good. Yeah, shit, man. He played the last Forbidden show with his band Skinner. And I've, I've played with the Magicka before and, you know, the great power metal bands. And, uh, you know, but I thought of him as a power metal singer, which is not what Forbidden really was. I know we have we have some, uh, you know, parallels as far as melodic, 
but you know, it's a the approach that Russ took was very much a thrash metal Rob Halford kind of thing. So um, he came in and sang a bunch of songs, and I was like, wow, he's really good. I think every song we did, I, Exodus, Did Matter, Metallica, Death Angel, he did them all, and he was killing it. And uh, I, I was really blown away. And then it came time, uh, Forbidden's on the set list. And I was like, well, we're all here. And I had all four guys from Omega Wave in the room, uh, being Mark on drums and, and Matt and uh, Steve Smythe and myself and Norman. I'm like, well, do you want to run through off the edge? And he's like, yeah. And he, I just I just never forget. He kind of grabbed the mic. He's like, all right. And it just had a different kind of, okay. So we started it. And as we started it, I realized we're not playing this song. None of us are playing this song. Why are we even doing it? He's not going to Europe. We're not playing it on stage. Because one of the things that's international is nobody plays their own song. That was the whole premise, the, the idea that makes it different. Everybody's got to watch when their song comes up, you know, so other guys need to stretch out and, and do the job. And that really helps make it special because then you put you care. But we started and I didn't stop it as I was realizing this. And then he came into the first verse and I was like, wow. Uh, it wasn't that he sounded like Russ. He just sounded super convinced and and like uh just like he owned it i was like he's singing like himself but he's like really good and then the door opens and it was chris on the other side of the door who was out in the hallway at the time chris contos and you know uh he looked at me like whoa he had these big eyes and harold was behind him he's like whoa the door closes i don't think much about it i'm like yeah, that was great and then the other guy's oh you know i'm like yeah i know <laughs> like i know i i heard it too I, you know but i'm just but i'm like no so we go to Europe, we do our thing, we come home. I, I call up Norman, I say, Norman, why don't you do like a bunch of songs with us, come to practice again, and uh, you can sing stuff for other guys too, but I want you to, I'm gonna give you some songs to, to do, and I want you to do Chalice of Blood with Warbringer. So we never heard that until the night before the show. Um, and then uh, we went to SIR in San Francisco, which is a really, uh, really nice, famous rehearsal studio where concerts kind of get ready to go. And uh, guys in Warbringer show up from L.A. and uh, they eventually get to doing Chalice of Blood. And I just see Norman kind of up on his toes like, let's go, you know, and um, and he, do he does it. And when the scream happens, I just felt like people looking at me like, like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I hear it. So that was amazing. And then after, you know, people were still talking about it, like, fuck you, that was great. I'm like, yeah, I know. And then he did the show the next day and I watched it from the side of the stage and, and he was great. And I said, OK. It could be done, but I'm still not into it. <laughs> so I was never really sold. I mean, I was always sold that it could be done, but I just never saw the reason to force the issue. And it wasn't until we got an email from Alcatraz uh, asking if I would be interested in a 35th anniversary of Forbidden Evil. So this is what you can expect. This, this is getting your normal question. It's the 35th anniversary of Forbidden Evil. And they asked, and, and I'm paraphrasing, for uh, would you be interested in doing it with another singer since Russ is, you know, retired and has his health problems? And would you also be interested in doing it with Chris Contos? Because it's a, uh, you already played with them and it's a great story for the Europeans. They love Burn My Eyes, you know, the Machine Head record. Um, and I was like, uh, and I, I was like literally sitting right here and I just like sat back and I was like, okay. Like the universe is telling me something. And I, I immediately called her manager my manager he didn't manage forbidden at the time and I, I was like man i gotta do this dude like there's here's what they're offering and he's like oh dude he said, it's time if you think it's time you, you know, you're thinking norman right i'm like yeah i'm thinking norman he's like we'll make your calls so i called matt he's like he's like i, I was waiting for this phone call and then i called steve and he really needed it his wife had just died a few months earlier from cancer and it was just like some godsend you know to him to have something that she would have loved because she loved forbidden a lot and she was amazing and then i called norman and norman's like yes you know just yes and then i thought about drummers i still wasn't ready to say chris was the guy because i already played with him in the bonus ones i didn't want to push it you know but i talked to chris and chris told me uh we were both talking i said yeah dude I, i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna offer you a chance to try out for it if you want but is it too much for our friendship and he said it might be so he was giving me suggestions for drummers at first um so it, i swung back around after talking to everybody and every guy was interested every guy wanted to do it but they all live out of town they all have other plans leading into it they wouldn't be able to rehearse till like the last minutes or you know um 
and one guy has a, had an obligation with with another really big band, but he doesn't know when it was going to happen. So I swung back around to Chris. I'm gonna look, dude. I talked to them. I can get people out here, but you live here. You're my friend. You're my brother. We write great together. What are we doing? Why aren't we just doing this? And he's like, let's do it. So, so that's how the lineup came together. And uh, you could expect a lot of enthusiasm in that lineup with Matt and, and Steve and myself being the core original ish, or at least the core members, Matt and myself are the original. So that was a, you unpacked a lot in that and really good like backstory of leading up to obviously getting the lineup and obviously doing the uh, the European Festival uh, uh, Al- Alcatraz. But you know what the best part about it is? You know what the yeah. best part about it is? It's all true. Every word of it. And and I was not forcing this issue. I've never wanted to do it uh, just out of great respect for us. And I still do respect for us. That will never change. But, you know, even he had said years ago, if you guys are going to do it again, go ahead. I'm not doing this. I can't do this anymore. No, uh, for sure. I know, as you said, you know, you were the one, it was like the universe giving you signs about, you know, possibly doing, you know, putting this back together. And obviously, completely understand with Russ, you know, obviously sobriety is a huge, a huge thing. And obviously with touring and, you know, playing shows, not, uh, not always the best, but I'm glad he's doing very good. I've, you know, I'm glad he's uh, good spiritually, mentally, and physically as well. So I'm, I'm happy to hear about that. But for, so for you, I've, I've I've heard you know obviously on the internet press release and stuff that they're calling this a new era uh, for forbidden and I kind of want to rebirth a rebirth a rebirth That's exactly what it, yeah. Uh, yeah for for forbidden I just want to get your thoughts about that. Well, I, I think that's the only really uh, correct way to put it because you know the first time around was a reunion, uh, but we didn't have Paul Bostaff. And even that, you know, it's not, it's never going to be a hundred percent, hardly ever. You got very few bands on planet earth that are hundred percent, all original members. It's just a freaking rarity. You know, I mentioned Radiohead. That's a band that's been all original since, you know, Mastodon, Gojira, uh, Metallica. Well, not even Metallica. No, it's like, it's just on and on, you know? It, um, so that wasn't going to happen. And, it, and I, and it's really not a reunion. Um, Matt and I always hang out anyway, and you know, Steve. I see Steve. I say we're we're not reuniting. We're 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 just restarting. We're rebooting. We're rebirthing a big bloody birth, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it just seemed like more uh, accurate title. It feels it feels like it's a new thing, playing the old song and with with some new blood. And I and I think that the new blood has enough experience and savvy where it's going to be ruling, you know. Oh, exactly. And I know, uh, obviously, uh, you know, uh, Norman Skinner, fantastic vocalist, very, I'm familiar with his work, but a- as well. And it, it's cool. Like, I, you know, following you guys, I, you know, as, as I told you, I've heard, you know, interviews from you guys, listening to your music, and like, j- just seeing that press release come across my desk, I'm like, well, this is crazy. And this is so cool to see. Again, you know, 2023 is like, um, just feels like all the stuff that you know, you didn't think it was possible is happening. It's just, it's so cool, at least from, you know, my perspective. Oh, I appreciate that you, that you got uh, excited about it. I, yeah. I mean, as excited as, as anyone else is, I think we're more excited, but what's great is uh, also we haven't started practicing yet. Right. So everyone's doing their homework and we really start like this upcoming week, uh, but we got like almost three months. So, you know, it, for, for three of us, it's in our DNA. And for the other two, they've been working, you know, studying, doing all their homework. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I definitely, I, I hope uh, you guys have great practice and a great show at Alcatraz as well. I do got uh, just a few more questions about Forbidden. I do got a few other things I do want to cover with you. Sure. Uh, so for you, do you have a favorite Forbidden song to perform live? Well, that's a good question. It, that, I think that's a revolving, uh, a lazy Susan, you know, like it kind of changes from night to night. Um, I mean, first of all, you know, I'm not complaining, but man, we wrote things that are really difficult to play. You know, they're very unorthodox. Uh, they aren't like, I can play the other thrash band stuff and have a way easier time than I do playing my own. And it just, it takes a while to rev up. And if you need proof of that, try to find somebody playing a forbidden cover online. You'll notice immediately. It doesn't sound right. You'll notice it like immediately because they're missing notes, you know, pick up notes and whatnot. But I think a song, uh, songs that always go over best are like, you know, uh, Infinite, Step by Step, Chalice of Blood, uh, 
through eyes of glass forbidden evil you know those are like you know your your big hits um and uh it twisted into form is one that also goes over really well live and then when we were playing stuff off the new record uh both adapt or die omega actually all three adapt or die omega wave and uh forsaken at the gates always went over really good and we hadn't really touched on the songs from the other two albums in between because most people weren't aware but now there seems like a, a much greater awareness for distortion and green um so you know when we come back around after the 35th anniversary we'll probably dust off a little bit of everything uh but for the 34th anniversary it's going to be mostly for, all of Forbid we're, we're definitely going to play all of forbidden evil in its entirety and then sandwich it with some twisted in the form stuff very nice very nice that yeah that's gonna be really cool and especially for everyone who's gonna be at that uh, gonna be an awesome experience so last thing about forbidden that i want to cover so what's do you got plans after alcatraz like um that you can speak of well i mean i can neither confirm or deny bay area shows but if that were to happen it would be after alcatraz and you know but in the meantime, I, I am going to start writing. Uh, I do want to write a record. I do think it's important to get that, you know, lyrical, uh, for me personally, that lyrical itch I need to scratch to get that, you know, you know, yin yang, psychological, the whole two skulls crashing type of lyrical content that I always uh, delved into. I, I, I haven't done it in a while. You know, I, I take the, uh, I take the sidecar in my other bands with writing lyrics. I just play guitar and write songs and whatnot. But uh, that's something I'm really looking forward to. And I've already started subject matter for the next album, things to, things to write about, because I'm going to paint pictures. I'm going to have uh, subjects uh, this time, uh, and I'm going to delve into it trying to paint pictures. You know, like This is what I hear when I think of this. And I, this is a different way. I've done it a little bit in the past. Um, but you know, with most thrash, it's like it starts with a riff. What does the riff make you feel you know but i want to do a little bit of both this time all right and that sounds really awesome and uh, i do uh do hope uh the very best for you with all of that now do for you do you have to kind of step into a little bit of a different mentality to approach music like for forbidden compared to the other bands you were in oh yeah but i'm used to it I've, I've i've been the guy uh you know there's a couple others in this genre in my in my business that have done it but i've been the guy that uh has great respect for all music that I love, you know? And I played, uh, I went from Forbidden to Start Man May God, which was a completely like, at first it was just a super heavy experimental color thing. It was, I was just trying to find my way through it. And then then we've got a great singer and then all of a sudden all that became like conducive. And, uh, and it just it became a rock band almost overnight with his amazing voice, like it, it it was like all that work I did to learn how to figure out what I was doing. And then boom, there it is, you know, so we had something great. So I, I really did lean in heavily into hard rock where a lot uh, for years and it was great. I, I had the time of my life. I did wonderful things. I made a record with Rick Rubin. I, I you know, started a band with you know, Tim Narducci from Systematic and we did a bunch of stuff together, and, um, made some great music. Um, but that all kind of, uh, Roll, rolled up to a fine point and then in 2008 the forbidden thing kicked off again and that was that was the reunion and uh it couldn't you know couldn't keep it rolling but um dress the dead uh is what you know something i started in 2016 and or no 17 actually and uh that's heavy i mean that you know i had peter dolving in the band at first and i wanted it to be my whole idea for, for dress the dead was always the same thing i called it thrash and roll because i felt like it, it it had it had had to have all my influences laid out there right from the get. It had to be thrashy and it had to have a, a great rock and universal mel melodic kind of feel to it. And that's what we did. And, you know, uh, Peter didn't last long because he had things going on at home he had to deal with. So, you know, then we found Kayla and it was like the other greatest singer I've ever known in my life. I've I've been lucky enough to play with. Russ Anderson and Kayla Dixon, who's all equally as talented and just people, if they don't know, they should know Kayla's the shit. She's, she's amazing. But COVID kind of threw us for a curve and we lost like two and a half years of the plans we were making. And uh, we actually went and did Dynamo this last year. It was great. And Alcatraz. We played both Dynamo and Alcatraz and people loved it. And I had plans for the band. 
Um, but things happened and then this forbidden thing kind of took off. So that's on ice. It's not, it's not done, but it's definitely going to be uh, not the priority presently. And then boneless ones. Oh yeah. Those guys that we have plans. We're actually playing dynamo this year. Um, Chris and I will already be out there for Alcatraz. So lucky us, you know, that all happened later, but uh, yeah, that's, that was a skate rock band and it is a different mindset because, but it's not really because it's, it's thrashy too. Like, um, the reason why they asked me to join the band is because they the guitar player they had wasn't really well versed in thrash and hardcore and his right hand just couldn't keep up so chris was like would you be interested in checking out because i saw him with the bonus ones in 87 it was one of the greatest shows i ever saw it was on uc campus on the berkeley campus and they broke up right afterwards i was like where'd they go so then when he got back together with them after machine head kind of reignited i was looking at all these bonus ones things like oh they're back oh cool yeah then he got i got the call and uh they're a legacy punk rock band. I mean, they're very popular to the all the skaters, all uh, in the whole punk rock scene. You know, they all know Max. Our singers, like, you know, the merchandise mogul. Our bass player was the old skater, like the pro skater guy. Um, so he went. You know, he edits movies for Hollywood and uh, and movies and television shows. Does some great work, man. He's like a mentor for other editors. And so th those guys got their shit together, and uh, that's been super fun. Oh yeah, definitely. No, um, all three bands, Address the Dead, The Bonus Lens, and Forbidden, they are um, they're definitely they're very unique. They have very unique characteristics. You know, as you said, you know, the boneless one, like I'm a huge punk fan, love the bonus ones. And with that kind of that that kind of skate punk, it's definitely a lot heavy. It's like heavier punk music, you know, because of obviously, you know, including some more um, you know, thrash kind of characteristics with it, but it's very heavy. But also with Dress the Dead, you guys um, you know, as you said, thrash thrash and roll, I really like that. It's a great term, but you guys also, you know, talk about some, um, you know, uh, comment on society a little bit with the music as well. And of course, Forbidden uh, is the legendary Forbidden. Yeah, they're all different. And, but they're all, to me, I've never been afraid to take chances, nor have I been afraid to, you know, uh, show the vulnerable side of life. You know, I, I and um, not to say that other people are, but in my genre and, for, you know, a lot of my peers are paralyzed to do anything other than what people know them for. And I've never been, I've never been. And I think that that keeps me younger and in, inside and I'm, I'm a happier person because I reach out of the, you know, my comfort zone and, and try things. And, and as, as a result, some great stuff has happened in my life. And um, I haven't had great, great, like monetary success or anything, but I've, got a lot of respect from other people and, and, uh, and they, you know, followed my catalog and just, you know, when it all lines up, I just, I feel like it's just, it's been a timing issue, you know, like the timing here, timing there, but I've never, I've never not enjoyed what I've done or the time that I've spent doing it or the people that I've done it with. And, uh, I feel very lucky that anyone gives a shit at all about anything. Oh, oh, for sure. It's, you know, it's, it's about, you know, the money is one side of it, but also just the, the memories and, and the people, the relationships you, uh, you know, you make, the people you meet, all that stuff. And, you know, you know, they have the fans that, uh, and the fan base you guys have for all of the different bands. It's you know, always very cool to see. And I'm, I'm very happy for you and all, all the bands that you are a part of. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a ride, dude. If I, and if I don't take the ride and enjoy the ride, then I'm just like, you know, if I'm just just a spectator and and uh, and I and I'm bitter or or jaded about anything, then I, I I've missed the lessons. You know. Oh, exactly, and and not only just the lessons, just the the experiences of doing you know doing things as well. You know, like it, you know, it's a roller coaster ride of life. You know, you have the ups and downs. You learn from it from both you know the ups and downs. But yeah, if you're just sitting on the sidelines, you're not you know you're not doing anything. You're just watching. Right. And I've been lucky enough to play with some extremely talented people that make me sound a lot better, you know, I mean, uh, all the way across, you know, you, from the first Forbidden album all the way. I don't, I've never had uh, players that I've surrounded myself with that weren't all, you know, great at what they did and really, really good and talented. And it goes with the singers, the drummers, you know, I've been lucky enough to play with some of the greatest drummers in the world, man. I think about it like, I mean, if I just I rattle off the names, starting with Bo Staff, to Steve Jacobs, who took over for him, to uh, then it was Eric Eric Kretz uh, joined uh, 
you know, Steve Jacobs was in Man May God with me too. So Eric Kretz actually sat in for him from Stone Temple Pilots. And then it was uh, a guy named uh, Ron Redeen who was actually, no, then it was Chris Contos in Spiral Arms. Then it was Ron Redeen. Then it was uh, Gene Hoagland in Forbidden. And uh, then it was Mark Hernandez in Forbidden. Then it was Sasha Horn in Forbidden. Then it was Andy Galleon in Spiral Arms. Um, and then it was back to Mark Hernandez uh, in Forbidden again. And, uh, or actually in Dress of Dead, I'm sorry. And then uh, here we are today with uh, Chris Contos in The Boneless Ones and in Forbidden. So, I mean, these guys are all just tremendous, tremendous drummers. Oh, for sure. You know, top quality musicians, every name that you listed. And it, it, it is awesome that, you know, you've had the opportunity to, you know, play with them, you know, in a few different bands over your career. And it's just so cool, as I said, high caliber musicians and, um, you know, playing with that kind of level of musicians just elevates your game as well. It does. You got to step up. You can't, you can't be the weak link, you know? I mean, and, and they, you know, I think one of the reasons why drummers like playing with me is because I'll offer them, uh, a tapestry that they can really sink their teeth into and challenges them. You know, uh, they can, you know, be it if, if it's the metal stuff or the rock stuff, it's just, they seem to always find something amazingly interesting to do. Oh yeah, for sure. You have with your, you know, your caliber of, um, you know, uh, guitar playing as well. You, you have a wide range as we discussed between punk rock and uh, thrash metal that you can play a lot of different stuff. And obviously, as you said, the drummers can, they have a whole wider variety to choose from and to, as you said, sink their teeth into. Yeah. But Craig, I had a great time chatting with you. Thank you so much for stopping by super cool radio. I'll drop some links for dress the dead, the boneless ones and forbidden in the description of this podcast. As we great. were talking about forbidden, you're going to be performing at Alcatraz in Belgium coming up in august uh i believe right yes august yeah august 11th i think is the actual date august 11th uh i'll drop some more links for that as well but craig thank you so much for stopping my super cool radio is honored to have you on the podcast yeah thanks man yes cool questions it was fun thank you i appreciate it for craig little cicero of forbidden the boneless ones and dress the dead i'm your host as always matthew thomas thank you so much for watching this is super cool radio and remember stay frosty <laughs>